All right, I'd like to um, just thank Sages and uh, the moderators for the opportunity to participate in this panel. It's been a pretty amazing session, I think. Um, I don't have any disclosures except that, um, one, I do actually get to argue the side of this that I believe in for the most part, and two, I've never participated in a presidential debate, so I'm almost completely unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to do is just talk about MESH, the long-term impacts of its use, and what do we know about whether we should use it or not. So when we look, and there's a lot of talks on this already, but the problem really is that with these hernias really do impair patient quality of life. The, no matter how you fix it, there's a pretty significant risk that this hernia is gonna come back, and a smaller but real possibility that you're gonna to have to go back there and fix it again at some point in their life, and that that's a difficult operation that definitely carries a higher morbidity than the primary repair. So the goals when we're fixing these and the goals for why would we put a mesh there are we want to reduce the recurrence rate, we want to improve patient's quality of life, and we want to reduce the need to be going back there and doing these operations again. So then the real question is, does putting a piece of mesh on the hiatus accomplish any of those things? So these are the ways we've seen that you can put a mesh around the hiatus. In my sort of experience, if there's this many ways to do something, either we just don't know how to do it or it doesn't work, right? So if you look at this picture down in the bottom towards the left, there's a circumferential piece of mesh like the one we were looking at. So last week, I had to operate on a patient who had a repair done like this with a non-absorbable piece of mesh. They subsequently never ate well, losing weight. Two years later, they come to me with a big secondary epiphrenic diverticulum a wrap that's intact below the diaphragm, and this mesh has prolapsed up into the hiatus. So what I find when I get there is everything's stuck. Liver stuck down, the wrap is stuck to the anterior side of the hiatus, the esophagus is circumferentially fused to the hiatus, and then the prolapse mesh has, is attached to this diverticulum on the backside, and that was four hours of my life that I'm never gonna be able to get back. <laughs> So PTFE was really the first mesh that was described and used in this area. It's the only mesh that's ever really been clearly demonstrated to reduce recurrence rates, but the problem is exactly that case I was just talking about. So you get these complications that while we don't know the exact rate, we know that they happen, and when they do, it's a catastrophe. So I think for the most part, we really shouldn't be using this type of mesh. Bioprosthetic meshes, have in Brandt's uh, trial that he did, really showed that you can reduce the early recurrence rate, but it doesn't affect the long-term recurrence rate. And we know, it, just from doing revisional operations, if they do come back and need another operation, it does cause more scarring and it does make those operations harder. So it's really unclear if you're getting any benefit from this mesh that you're not paying back in the long run by when they, when they come, hernias come back. So just to look at one of these meta-analyses. So there are a number, and, I, and um, Dr. Ratner did a nice job of sort of summarizing what they show. But when you look at the issues that we were are talking about at the beginning, this is a meta-analysis just of the randomized trials that were done. And there are two of them used permanent mesh, one used absorbable mesh, one used both. So the, it's hard to kind of pool the results. But you do see a um, decrease in early reoperations, hernia recurrence. There's a trend there, but you don't really see um, a reduction in early hernia recurrence. Reoperation rate is a little bit reduced by the use of mesh. This is again early. I think we don't really know long run does it affect reoperation rate. We do know that it makes it harder, but we don't really know if you can reduce that rate. It's just unclear. Mesh-related complications, there was no difference in uh, perioperative complications, again, in these studies, but they're short-term studies. So most of the complications related to mesh are patient-reported and that they're dysphagia or erosions and things like of that nature that don't really get reported very well in these trials that aren't big enough to, um, to detect those, the rate of those issues. So we just, again, don't really know. So then, in conclusion, 
I think that routine use of mesh, there is no data to support doing it, and we do know that it causes some problems, and I don't think that that should be used. Um, a more appropriate title for this talk than the one I had might be never use, don't routinely use mesh at the hiatus. Clearly when you have some of these very difficult closures where the cruises wants to tear, you need to do relaxing incisions, buttressing that may, um, may help. So in my practice, my approach to this is, if I'm looking at the closure I'm doing and I'm thinking that I better like cancel everything I'm doing later tonight because I might have to come back and fix it again, then I put a mesh on there. Otherwise, I don't use it. Thank you.